When you're dealing with a person with Narcissistic Personality Disorder, or NPD for short, you will quickly find yourself in a painful and confusing psychological maze. This is partly due to a phenomenon known as cognitive dissonance. Cognitive dissonance refers to the psychological discomfort and distress that arises when you are trying to hold on to conflicting beliefs, attitudes, or behaviors at the same time. I'm Lisa Blatt and today I'm going to explain cognitive dissonance and talk about seven different types of cognitive dissonance and at the end of this video I will let you know what you need to do in order to resolve it. When it comes to someone with a cluster B personality disorder you will experience very different sides of them. One minute they may be loving and charming and the next they might go towards being critical, angry, condescending. Narcissists especially are known for sending mixed messages with their words, their attitudes, their moods, their behaviors, and their energy. One moment you can feel like things are going great and then a switch goes off and it's like a door just slams in your face. These uh, contradictions and inconsistencies give you this sense that they have a Jekyll and high personality. It's this push-pull dynamic and the intermittent rewards and punishments that creates so much cognitive dissonance causing you to spend most of the relationship and sometimes even years after it's over trying to figure out and reconcile these different sides of that person and their vastly different behaviors towards you. It's so confusing because none of it adds up. So you're trying to solve this puzzle but it's like you're missing so many pieces or maybe the wrong pieces are mixed into the puzzle and you just can't figure out how to put it together. So here are seven common situations and factors that can cause cognitive dissonance in no particular order. Uh, number one is that the narcissist almost always idealizes their partner at the beginning of the relationship, making them feel incredibly loved, valued, and deeply cherished. But as the relationship goes on, they start to devalue and criticize their partner. And this sudden shift from idealization to devaluation leads to cognitive dissonance. And you will likely find yourself desperately trying to figure out who this person really is. Are they the kind, safe, loving, vulnerable person you fell in love with? Or are they this mean, critical, nasty, abusive person that's showing up more and more in the relationship? Which side of them is real? Number two, a narcissist is skilled at identifying your emotional triggers and deliberately setting you up to behave or react in certain predictable ways. Then they use your misbehavior to mischaracterize you as a bad person, as an abuser, and to position themselves as the victim. They subtly cast blame or distort your character to put you on the defensive, making you feel like you need to prove your integrity and your intentions as they simultaneously paint themselves the innocent victim. As they push your buttons more and more, you may find yourself acting in ways that are out of character for you, making you question your own self-perception and your sense of self. So let's say you perceive yourself to be a kind, calm person, but then you get engaged in these irrational blowouts with the narcissist. This creates a discrepancy between how you're behaving and how you see yourself and it causes you to question who you really are. Are you who the narcissist is saying you are? Are you this darker side of yourself? Or are you who you've always known yourself to be? For more information about reactive abuse, please click on the link above. Number three, imagine you're in a cold room and someone tells you that the room is actually quite warm and everyone else in the room agrees that it's warm and yet you feel ice cold. Your sensory input, feeling cold, contradicts the input you're getting from others, creating cognitive dissonance. If you've been in a relationship with a narcissist, 
there is no doubt that you've experienced these types of contradictions as they try to gaslight you and collapse your sense of reality in order to get you to buy into theirs. A person with NPD uses psychological tactics and justifications for their actions because they genuinely believe their distorted logic and warped sense of reality. You may start to sense that you have one foot in actual reality and one foot in the narcissist's reality. Number four is debating between two conflicting choices or moral dilemmas that have both positive and negative aspects. And this can create cognitive dissonance because after making a decision, you might feel uneasy about the potential drawbacks of either option. And this leads to doubt, second guessing. So for example, this might happen when you believe that you can't live with your narcissistic partner, but you believe that you can't live without them either. And this can make you feel extremely confused as there is no easy answer or solution. Staying makes you feel terrible, but so does leaving. Number five is the sunk cost fallacy. This describes our tendency to follow through on a commitment or decision if we have already invested a lot of time, effort, or money into it, even if the costs outweigh the benefits. So if that investment is not yielding the expected results, we keep going. Instead of cutting our losses and admitting we've wasted our time, energy, or money, we try to convince ourselves that there's still a chance delaying the inevitable failure and loss. I am going to show up for her and support her for the rest of my life. Number six is mixed messages. So a person with NPD gives a lot of mixed messages. This can be verbal. So these contradictions between what they say one minute and what they say the next um, are confusing. And these contradictions are also in their behavior. So they may treat you in really nice, charming, loving ways in one moment and then treat you very badly in the next moment. <laughs> I want sweet Zay. I am extremely sweet, but no, I'm not always gonna have a great attitude. I wanna just not get punched in the face when I first oh, see you, you after are... that. Maybe they're telling you that they love you one moment, but they are ice cold at the same time, or maybe they give you a compliment wrapped in uh, insults. I see you picking things up and I see you making the bed. And I try to always be like, oh, you took the trash out. Oh, you made the bed, I love it. I would expect my wife to just like, like me a little bit more, I guess. How can you think I don't like you? Another example might be that they temporarily acknowledge their part in a problem, maybe even give you a weak apology, but then within a short time span, like a second later, they're cleverly shifting the blame back onto you. So you end up leaving this so-called apology, feeling confused and unsure of your own perceptions and interpretations of the situation. Number seven, when a relationship with a person with NPD ends, you may rationally know that the relationship was destroying you, that there was no way to make it work, but you can't stop wondering if you could have done something different, if you could have changed the outcome, if it really is all of your fault. One minute you may feel strong and tell yourself it's for the best. And then the next moment, something reminds you of them, you miss them, you start reminiscing about the good times and you're going back and forth, back and forth, spinning around and around these conflicting thoughts and feelings. You may be reluctant to acknowledge the extent of the narcissist's manipulations and mistreatment because facing that truth can be emotionally painful and it can force you into making decisions that are not easy or without consequence. Also, the truth may not be easy to see due to all of the emotional turmoil and manipulation. You could spend years trying to reconcile all of these contradictions but the more you try, the deeper into the maze you go. So the key to resolving cognitive dissonance is to stop yourself from trying to put these pieces of the puzzle together because it's literally like taking a thousand puzzles with a thousand pieces and throwing them all on the floor in a huge arena and spending the next 10 years trying to solve all of these puzzles. 
it is truly a hopeless and futile endeavor. If you found this video helpful, please comment, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. And to learn more about breaking free from narcissistic abuse, click on the link above.